Hello everyone, in this video we want to give you a few tips for new puppy owners that will make the experience much more enjoyable for you and your new puppy. When you arrive home, it's very important to take them to an area where they can use the bathroom. You can use your lawn, a uh, gravel area, or a chipped area like we have here. Um, it's a good idea to keep your puppy on a leash. That way, they're not running around and you're not losing them the first day you bring them home. Um, it's a good idea to keep puppy treats on hand to reward your puppy after they go to the bathroom. Now, the puppy, when you bring him home, chances are your puppy will be sniffing and exploring and walking around uh, discovering their new home. And it's okay to do that. Because your puppy is on a leash, your puppy will not wander off too far because they are near you. They're by your side of the bathroom. You want them to stay in the area where you would prefer them to go to the bathroom. Puppies go to the bathroom after they wake up, play, and eat. So make sure you are able to take them outside and they go to the bathroom after those three things. Mm -hmm. okay. Puppies are small and they can't hold very long. So it's a good idea to take your puppy out every few hours, especially every hour or two hours at least. As your puppy grows, so will their bladder, and they will be able to hold much longer and go a full night without waking up to use the bathroom. When you get your puppy, it's very important that you have a very large crate for them. You should have a place for their sleeping area, litter box, and some room for their water bowl and food bowl. Now, why crate train? Well, there are several reasons why. One, it protects the puppy. Say you need to get groceries or you need to leave the house. It's very dangerous to leave your puppy running around in the home because they can eat something or get stuck somewhere. So it's important that they are safe in their crate when you are aware, away. Now, another reason why it's important to crate train is to keep your house safe. Um, well, what does that mean? It means keeping your puppy from going to the bathroom where he should not. It means saving your slippers and avoiding tears. It also means curtains, floor length curtains, bedding, furniture, um, couches, or even hardwood floors. I mean, puppies, they see everything as a toy. They're very playful, and if they want to chew on something, they will. So, one, to keep your puppy safe, and to keep your house safe. Now, when puppies wake up, they naturally go to the bathroom. So it's very convenient to have the bathroom area right next to the sleeping area. The puppy will have no excuse to miss or go somewhere where they shouldn't. Ideally, you want to have the bathroom area in the back of the crate um, and the sleeping area in the front. That is because when you come to get your puppy at the door, the puppy will not be dancing or like um, walking or stepping in the bathroom area and getting dirty, they will be in the clean part of the crate. So the ideal material for the... <laughs> Max just woke up. This is Max. Hello, everyone. Um, so the ideal litter box material is shavings rather than newspaper. You can have the newspaper underneath everything to catch any spillages or accidents, who knows. But if you have the right size crate, your puppy will be trained and safe and accommodated. Also, puppies, again, have sharp teeth. You can see that Max has started to tear the bed. Now, along with the sharp teeth, 
keep the crate away from curtains because puppies will easily grab their paws if you take a look. His paw easily slips through the crate and he can just take that curtain and do whatever he wants with it. <laughs> so again, keep in mind, um, it's ideal to have the crate by a window. Puppies need sunlight, so make sure there's some sunlight streaming in. Um, make sure that there's no direct heaters or AC units pointing directly at the crate because the puppy can get either cold or hot. <laughs> oh. Now, if you bought your puppy from a breeder who did train the puppy's potty training and crate training, it'll be easier for you. But if you got a puppy from a breeder who did, was not able to train the puppies, then you can, with patience, you can teach your puppy to be potty trained and crate trained. If the puppy makes an accident, don't throw their waste away. Rather, take their waste and put it into a litter box so that way um, the puppy can smell his own waste and go in that area and he will associate the litter box with the bathroom. The first steps to teaching your puppy a crate training is to help, is to open the crate, make sure that it's open door and put a yummy treat inside the crate so the puppy associates the crate with a pleasant experience. So here we have peanut butter, which dogs really enjoy. We spread peanut butter on a teething toy and we will put it inside the crate and leave the crate open. Okay. All right, Max, in you go. In you go. And I'm leaving the door open. Max is taking a peek inside. sort of exploring. We are crate training. He might be, yeah, he's smelling the peanut butter. He is enjoying his little treat. So, so far he's having a pleasant experience. The door is open, there are toys. There's a soft pillow. So when you see that the puppy has become comfortable with the crate, you can close the door, but don't let the puppy cry. So keep the door closed for a few moments without letting the puppy cry. Again, we want to make sure the puppy has a pleasant experience. Doing okay, Max? All is good? And now he is associating this crate with a positive experience. So when your puppy is in their crate, instead of tearing up multiple things, they are most likely just going to tear up their bed, which isn't as bad as getting damage to your other furniture. Okay, so Max is using the bathroom. Good job, Max. A little bathroom break. Okay. Again, there is no other room for the puppy to make a mess other than their designated litter box. So now he's drinking water.
Ты видишь? Все. Окей, Макс. Well, I'm first going to open the door. Now, if he wants to come out, he will. That's his choice. But he has the freedom to walk out if he wishes to. So, as you can see, this crate has everything Max needs. Food, water, yummy treats, toys, a soft area to sleep, and a litter box. And that's why he is not, um, he's not feeling anxious or wanting to get out of the crate. He's perfectly fine, and although the, the door is open, he's still inside. Okay. So we put down the newspaper to show as example. But if your puppy, like Max, wants to tear up the newspaper, you don't have to use it. As long as there is a tray at, in the crate. So there's a tray that's removable and washable, you should be fine. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> you doing okay? Now we're coming out. Are you coming out now? Hello, Max. Hello, hello, hello. Oops. So if the puppy is walking around in a circle, sniffing for something, or like showing restlessness, then that means they want to use the restroom. Think of your puppy just like your baby. Puppies also need different kinds of toys for development and they enjoy playing. Okay, just like with a baby, you don't want to leave your puppy unattended with toys because they can bite a piece off and possibly choke. Here we have one example, right here is another. But you can reuse various kinds of toys from your kids or maybe the ones that you find at a garage sale such as this baby toy you can turn it on and they can explore it um these little toys teething toys especially because puppies also teeth and they have very sharp teeth if you notice here on the puppy bed they have started to tear it and uh, yeah, it just shows that they are very feisty and their teeth are very sharp and they're perfectly capable of biting something off. Now, like I mentioned, this is a teether toy. Um, ideally, you want to give them something hard that they can't break off, but they can still play with. This is one of our favorites because it's like a ball, but it's more entertaining and they can still teethe with it. This is another teether toy and it's safer because it's very hard. You cannot break something off of it, like say this squeaky one. There are other fluffy toys like teddy bears, um, these ones which we put a water bottle in. Um, we have these ones, the ones that they can play tug of war together with. Um, these ones that make noises. So, yeah. Of course, you can also use items from your house and even pantry for toys. You can use empty water bottles filled with a little bit of water to add weight. You can use pizza boxes like you've seen in our other videos. You can also use like wrapping paper shiny wrapping paper um it's all great toys that make sounds or have different textures are all great for their development because they're able to interact with them instead of just a plain ball you know Training your puppy is very important. When you teach your puppy to sit and wait and look up at you, it helps the puppy understand that when they want something, they should wait patiently to get your attention instead of running around everywhere. 
Before beginning your puppy training, let your puppy explore the area where you will train him and make sure to have lots of yummy treats on hand. Dogs love yummy treats and when training your puppy, it's important to have them to make sure that they become obedient and listen to you. Here we have boiled chicken breast, but you can use any lean meat of your choice. It's ideal to have homemade snacks because you know that there's no other additives or preservatives. Cook your meat. It's important that after cooking, you let it cool down and then store in the refrigerator for a maximum of two days. Again, puppies are small and their stomachs are sensitive and you don't want to poison them. So ideally, store your meat up to two days to prevent any spread of bacteria or spoiling of the meat. It's ideal to have homemade snacks for your puppy because you know that they are natural and don't contain any additives or unnecessary chemicals. Puppies are like little kids. You don't want to overwhelm them with long training sessions. For a puppy, one to two minutes of training is enough and after that you want to give them a break. For adult dogs, two to three minutes is enough at their age. And the reason why you don't want the trainings to be long is because if the puppy makes a mistake, they will learn that and they will keep doing that. So you don't want in that long training session for your puppy to learn something that you don't want them to. So, which is why we want to keep the trainings to a brief, short, Session. First, let your puppy smell and try your yummy treat so that way you grab his attention and interest him. When you're training your puppy, make sure to give the treats through intervals. Start off frequently giving the treats and then extend the time between each treat, building the puppy's patience. Eye contact is very important. <laughs> During the initial trainings for your puppy, they may not look into your eyes at first, and that's okay. The most important goal is to have the puppy sitting and waiting patiently. Then, he will gradually look into your eyes. To help the puppy make eye contact with you, you can bring up the treat closer to your face, or find a moment and make eye contact with the puppy then. When the puppy makes eye contact with you, be sure to give him a treat right away. To have a productive training session and keep your puppy focused, a helpful tip is to allow the puppy to explore the area where you will be training him. Let the puppy wander around and get used to his surroundings. That way, he will not have the urge to do that during the training session. Behavior is learned, like in animals, like in humans. You are the owner and you are the leader, so don't let your puppy boss you around. Make sure that all, un all unwanted behavior is stopped immediately and all good behavior is rewarded. We hope these tips will be helpful in building a strong relationship with your new puppy. If you have any additional questions or comments, leave them down below and we'll get back to you.